Doctors of Reddit, what's the stupidest patient you've ever had? I had to explain to a 17 year old girl and her mother that she was not in fact allergic to alcohol, but she was just hungover. She complained that on nights, when she drank too much vodka, usually on an empty stomach, that she would feel nauseous, flushed and sometimes vomit in the morning. But it didn't happen all the time, and there were no other typical symptoms of an allergic reaction. I worked at a pain management clinic. In an attempt to combat opioid use slash addiction slash abuse, a lot of patients were prescribed a medicated cream. It looked a lot like sunscreen, and you just rubbed it onto the hurting areas. I watched the nurse carefully and slowly explain how to rub it onto the skin, using small, uncomplicated words and going through the motions of applying it several times. But every so often, patients would complain that their cream tastes bad. I once had a child who swallowed a sizable magnet that passed to the intestine and we were just waiting for it to pass in stool. The next day, when he came for follow up we just found out that he swallowed another one that got stuck to the first magnet in the intestine through the stomach wall resulting in intestinal obstruction and he was transferred to or immediately to have them surgically removed. I had a mom and grandma bring their 12 year old daughter slash granddaughter to the emergency room because she was bleeding. Not from trauma or a wound mind you, the poor girl had started menstruating and the mom didn't want to explain what was happening or started to happen nor that it would continue to happen as mom and grandma well knew. On the upside, it was a very quick visit once they were actually seen. My dad is an orthopedic surgeon who does a lot of hips and knees and cries with laughter every time he tells the story of a woman who didn't understand how hip surgery works and thought they were going to take her leg off, fix the hip, and then reattach her leg. Had a patient come, in stating that he cold and bent his knee, asked him to remove his trousers, so I could examine his leg. After he removed his trousers the reason that he cold and bent his knee was that he had a plaster cast around his knee. Checking his notes, he had been sent numerous letters asking him to come in for removal of this plaster cast and as he hadn't attended any of the outpatient clinics the hospital had assumed that he had removed the cast himself. Paramedic. Got a call for a stroke. Patient had facial droop and slurred speech. Says that it feels just like the last time she had a stroke, 10 years ago. Says that the symptoms came on about 4 days ago, and she knew the moment it was happening, that it was a stroke, but didn't go to the hospital, because she thought she could make it go away on her own. I know a guy who went to the doctor in a panic thinking he had cancer, because when he tugged his eyebrow hair some came loose. I posted this a while back, but it's too good not to share again 20 year old girl and her fianca find out that she's pregnant me, part way through taking her history, do you smoke cigarettes sir, uh? yay, about a pack a day me, you should definitely stop that her, uh? well, my sister told me that, if I stopped smoking, the baby would go into withdrawal and die me, what? A guy came to the outpatient clinic with swollen left ball. He said he was injected with some cajupid oil by his friend, with his consent, to enhance his performance in bed. I'm a female medical intern and I tried so hard to keep my expression as neutral as possible. My mum works in hospital, and the techs from radiology always have the best stories. Last week they had a male patient with a huge carrot up his ass. He came from a conservative area, by bus, standing course could not sit. It was a 3h bus ride. If I ever could change my job I wanna be a radiology tech. Edit, radiology tech not nurse. Maybe the guy who had previously had an anaphylactic reaction to a foodstuff, but wasn't sure he was really allergic, so thought head tested out by bringing some to the ed waiting room and eating it. Spoiler, he was really allergic. My one patient used to hold in her farts to the point of being in antagonizing pain because she thought that there was a certain amount of air inside a person and if you let too much out you'll deflate. Student here. A guy came into the air one time because he noticed dandruff. Dandruff. Like have you not heard of head and shoulders? Dental student. I have a patient that claimed to have gone to medical school. Here are some gems from this patient, patient, 
Hey doc do I need to move my head medial or distal? Me. No. Move your head to the right. Patient. Do you remember the Matt Hasselback equation from organic chemistry? This is the old QB of the Seattle Seahawks. Patient after looking at the x-ray or a radio pack, has density, mass in their mandible. Doc this is malignant mass, because I don't have a, the, lymphadenopathy. Malignant means the bad cells can invade other areas. Acker it's bad. The mass in the x-ray, was a supernumerary tooth acker extra tooth. It is within the spectrum of normal. Patient, can you adjust myelingualized occlusion please? Mimesia distal cusps are fracturing. There is no such thing as lingualized occlusion. There are no mesia distal cusps. Patient has severe bruxism. TLDR. Patient claims to have gone to medical school, but uses phrases that would indicate otherwise. Had a guy come into the ear for hiccups yesterday lol edit. I just got a million messages as to why hiccups almost killed people or some guy they know. Holy crap. This was not the case. No acute symptoms, no abdominal or thoracic complaints, no pain, no sob or dyspnea, no abnormalities, normal radexons. He just came in, because he was hiccuping. He was not dying. It wasn't a vagus nerve tumor or acute pancreatitis. It was hiccups. Just, hiccups. Calm your tits Jesus or mayo. Work in addition. Called the ambulance for chest pain was just upset her husband went to the tab, gambling, without her father-daughter combo. Convinced they had chicken pox. They had been outside fishing in the evening around mangroves, and were eaten alive by sandflies. Came in hunched over in pain and crying, claiming abdo pain. Didn't like the flavor of his meat pie, and wanted it out of his body the old sunburn trick, and forgot to put it on, and they suffer sunstroke drinking last night, and expect us to cure their hangovers. Patient thought taking vitamin B6 double dose was the same as B12. Had a patient and his girlfriend complaining of fleas. They were covered in red spots that they were picking at constantly. They were meth heads that were picking their skin off and imagining bugs were crawling on them. They were adamant that they had seen these bugs and pulled them out of these sores. Discharge instructions. Stop doing meth. Not a doctor. Work with them. The episode I can't forget, is the time a patient with established coronary artery disease and current chest symptoms was, in having an imaging cardiac stress test, and he sent out for a large cheesesteak calzone to be delivered to him between the stress and rest portions of the exam. Well, I got a flip one for you. I knew a doctor who made a mistake while self-prescribing, and ended up in the ER. Irate mom who wanted to speak to the doctor, because we took an unauthorized urine pregnancy test on 16 year old daughter just before x-rays. I never consented, and now she's traumatized. Explained that it is standard in females of childbearing age and that consent to treatment, was signed upon entrance to facility. Not good enough. They were rich Southeast Asian and I suspected, that this routine standard was perceived as an insult to their status. I'm that patient. My dad is a doctor, as a kid I called him in a panic, because I was peeing blood. Mind you, we were in Africa at that point, and he was doing development work. Told me not to flush and rushed home. Just to clarify, my dad was in the middle of a meeting with a bunch of big kahunas from FAO, UNMSFETC, and I ruined that instance for him. I'd eaten beats. I'm a CNA, not a doctor. With that being said, the other day a patient was telling me that they want the doctor to prescribe them heroin. I told him I am pretty sure they can't prescribe anyone heroin. Being new to the field I have learned the opioid epidemic is a very real thing that affects an insane amount of people. I knew it was bad, but I didn't think it was this bad. Drunk people usually had one come in for a popped blood vessel in the eye freaking the hell out. Not a doctor, but I work in a pharmacy and the first person that came to mind was a very overweight lady with an absolutely toxic personality. She always treated whoever was with her terribly, would come in every few months with a new ad from Dr. Ross for a new product to help her lose weight that she made me place a special order for. No what? She never shed any pounds. Paramedic here, called for a diabetic. I get there, and the patient is an older gentleman who is laying on a bed with what looks like a white mask on. 
I ask what's going on, and the family goes on to explain that he's a diabetic and the doc told them to give him frosting if his sugar gets low because the sugar content will perk him up. Turns out he didn't explain that they should put it in his mouth. That's right. They put a white frosting mask on this poor guy. Shocker. It didn't work. Objin doctor here. 40 years experience. About once a year would take care of someone in full blown labor, full term, who did not know she was pregnant. Very hard to wrap my head around. I guess the denial power of e-mind is substantial. My wife is an RN who works at an outpatient surgery center. Cataract surgery is one of the common surgeries that they do. Patients are told that after the surgery, they should put eye drops in 4 times a day for 1 week, so 28 drops altogether. One patient asked if it would be okay to just put the 28 drops in all at once, so they didn't have to deal with it for a week. Respiratory therapist here was working her uh, and was told we were getting a patient in respiratory distress. When she gets in she is having problems breathing and need oxygen. I'm placing an oxygen mask on her and she yells I'm allergic to oxygen. I heard the doctor laugh behind the curtains. I had a fella come into the air who was stone sober, but only because he had spilled all of his rubbing alcohol onto his pants, which meant he couldn't drink it. The reason why he was in the air, if the first place was, because he tried to burn the alcohol off of his jeans, by lighting the alcohol on fire, thinking the alcohol would burn, and not his pants. He had some pretty rowdy burns from the calves down, because he couldn't get his pants off of his shoes. To be honest pretty nice guy, absolutely the kind you'd expect to light themself on fire, but he was very pleasant considering the circumstances. Paramedic here had a pregnant patient that got stabbed in the neck with a glass soap bottle because she drank the last beer. We had a young methamphetamine addict present with upper abdominal pain. She had a gastroscopy and deteriorated afterwards. Court showed she had a perforated stomach following the procedure, the worst possible complication, and would need emergency surgery. Despite the damage she was not clinically too unwell, yet, despite hours of counseling slash pleading she self-discharged later, that day to go home and smoke meth. Never heard about her again. RN had a patient with neurofib and elevated troponin refuse any anticoagulant because Dr. Ross said tomatoes thin the blood and he is going to go home and eat more tomatoes instead. Patient arrives for ultrasound of soft tissue lump on abdomen, nature, me, so can you show me where this lump is you and your doctor are feeling. Patient points to obese belly, me, where exactly is the lump, patient, it's all here. Points again vaguely to entirely normal roll of fat. Me, trying to keep eyes from rolling. Some doctors are now unable to tell patients they are obese. I saw an elderly woman in the ed who had a nosebleed for like one hour. She showed me three towels drenched in blood and told me that the bleeding wouldn't stop. I asked her what she had already done to stop the bleeding. I just held these towels under my nose. And did you pinch your nose? No, why would I do that? So, after she was instructed to pinch her nose for 10 minutes, the bleeding miraculously stopped. An acute psychotic episode from smoking too much K2, I was on probation. Friends thought getting him on a bender of alcohol would cancel out the K2. I told the patient he needs a brain doctor, because they didn't know what a psychiatrist was. I pointed to my head. They interpreted that as an Indian doctor. They laughed me out of the room because they thought a doctor of another race couldn't help him. 